Forty years ago, Jane and I hit the road to discover America's food highway. Over a hundred thousand meals later, we're still finding delicious food, adventure, natural beauty, and interesting people. Memorable food stops with meals that are California's alone, sophisticated wineries and wine tasting rooms. These are a few of the pleasures of an oceanside drive along California's central coast, where Golden State allure endures. Let's hit the road. Just off the highway on the central coast, Avila Beach is a breath of fresh salt air. With small town charm, but a full array of fine hotels, oceanfront restaurants, sweeping beaches, and picturesque piers, it's a place you want to stay a while and totally de-stress. Jocko's is a reminder that today's image of California cuisine as trendy and stylish was preceded by a much more rugged sort of eating, the food of California ranch land, when this part of the state was all about cattle and cowboys. At Jocko's, you eat meat, red meat, big hearty cuts of it infused with smoke and literally dripping flavor. Guadalupe Napomo Dunes are a gorgeous 18-mile stretch of coastline shared by endangered species and some human visitors. Yes, this is still cattle country. One of Road Food's favorite places to eat beef, along with some delicious California artichokes, is the hitching post of Casmalia. It's fine dining for sure, fine but not the least bit fancy. Here, steaks are cooked to perfection over live oak flames. And in this context, wine is the right thing to drink. Red wine and good red meat. That's a perfect pairing, especially when surrounded by the historic trappings of cowboy culture that's been eclipsed by modern life in the Golden State. It's campfire eating and drinking at its finest. Los Alamos means the cottonwoods, but in California, it's become a coast drive destination with captivating vintage ambiance, as well as tasting rooms, restaurants, and some utterly fantastic bread. Some of the best bread in the West at Bob's Well Bread. The logo comes from my great grandmother's Victorian bread fork. It was something that was used as part of your flatware pattern in the Victorian times. Bob's Bakery would be worth recommending just on the virtues of bread alone, but if you have time for a meal, stay for breakfast, which includes some dazzling sandwiches. We do a special, it's called the World's Greatest Sandwich, and it was actually something I saw when I worked at Sony. We did a movie called Spanglish with Adam Sandler, and he's a chef, and he comes home late at night, and he makes this sandwich, and it's intoxicating to watch it. And he puts this whole sandwich together with the egg on top. You see him slice it open, and the egg just oozes all over the tomato and the lettuce and the cheese. And then he just picks it up and just eats it. The beauty about coming to someplace like Los Alamos is that you can spend your entire weekend and never have to get back in your car. But let's do get back in the car and head down the coast to a restaurant called Floriano's. Actually, the full name is Floriano's Mexican Food and Fresh Cuts. It's a restaurant and butcher shop with a vast array of Mexican food that's familiar, some uniquely California. Yes, there are tacos and burritos and quesadillas, but whatever you get, you want it made with beef. That's the specialty hereabouts, including ribeye carne asada and the local passion tri-tip. You'll want that served on a bolillo roll. This is a real taste of California's Mexican heritage. It would be wrong to visit this part of the state and not explore its wineries. I've been residing in Santa Barbara County for the last 48 years, and the reason I came was to grow grapes. We were looking for a place other than the Napa Valley. When you talk about the area being special, it's climate, soil, and care that go into the vineyard business to grow these premium varietal grapes. We've proven the quality of the wines coming out of here. They're world-class wines. 
We love visitors. We love to give them an experience. Wine needs to be experienced. How's your appetite? You want a healthy one if you're coming to Cold Spring Tavern. It's one of the oldest restaurants in the West, built in 1865 as a stagecoach stop. It's since become a destination for travelers who want to experience a meal unlike anywhere else. Here you find out-of-this-world beer-battered onion rings. Some say they're the best anywhere, and we would not disagree. And oh, the chili. There are three kinds of it. Steak, venison, and pork. Or have a grand piled-high sandwich, and with it, of course, flagons of beer. If signs of travel make you happy, we've got a Between Meals treat for you a visit to the Mendenhall Museum. My dad started collecting gasoline memorabilia back in the 60s when we had a service station. I've been collecting for 30 years, so there's about 80 years of collecting here. Our collection is one of the largest collections on the West Coast. I have over 2,000 signs, over 400 gas globes that are up and lit, over 100 gas pumps, 1,200 license plates, 37 neon signs. So this little museum has a lot of history. With food as unique as its name, Shalhoub's Funk Zone Patio is named for the Funk Zone neighborhood of Santa Barbara. Here you find artisan butcher's takes on burgers, barbecue, and tri-tip sandwiches. In other words, signature dishes of the West at their very best. Shalhoub Meat Company was started by my grandfather, Jerry Shalhoub, in 1973 here in the Funk Zone. For four decades, we've been cranking away, cutting meat, cutting chicken. The Funk Zone, really originated in the 60s and the 70s with businesses like ourselves and fisheries around town. And over the course of 30 years, the fisheries kind of moved out and the wineries came in, the art came in. Developing the funk zone into this cool, kind of new age, funky, artsy area. I think people should come to Santa Barbara for vacation because it's a very unique city. You're not gonna find many other places that have a beautiful mountain range, complemented by a beautiful coastal beach within five minute drive of each other. It's just impossible to find. Santa Barbara's coastline faces south and is sometimes known as the American Riviera. In our experience, the weather here is always perfect. One of our favorite places to drop in while visiting Santa Barbara is the Village Cheese and Wine Store. This is an opportunity to enjoy beautiful, well-crafted sandwiches, and to buy bags of the most interesting kinds of coffee, all in a very laid-back setting. It's a warm and friendly place to just hang around. Now we're on our way southeast to Ventura along Highway 101 that hugs the Pacific. It's a favorite destination no matter what sort of surfer you are. An unseasoned Barney, that's a rookie, a wave hog, a hoe dad, a paddle puss, or a bitchin' dude. This awesome place was immortalized in the Beach Boys song Surfin' USA, which said, you'll catch them surfing at Del Mar and the Ventura County Line. When you're surfing, you want ultra casual eats. The town of Ventura delivers that in the form of Corrales Mexican Food Shacks, a couple of joints that serve the unique Ventura specialty, bean stuffed corn burritos, as well as some mighty fine tacos, all of which will get you plenty of change from a $10 bill. There are diners and quick eat shops aplenty around here, but when you crave a more substantial meal with distinct local character, the place to go is Spencer McKenzie's Fish Company. Here you find filling portions of fresh fish served in casual surfside digs just a few blocks from the beach. The fish tacos here are famous. The grilled fish and shrimp burrito is not to be missed. Finally, Ventura Pier. It's the best place we know to go for a long sunset walk above California's greatest single asset, the Pacific Ocean. 